Welcome to Broke Ass to Badass, where heart-led entrepreneurs learn to build the businesses and lives of their dreams with confidence, ease, and joy. This is the anti-hustle movement, and we're your coaches in badassery, Kimi and Pua. Find out more at bledigital.com, and wherever you're listening to this, be sure to click subscribe so you never miss an episode. Today on the podcast, we have an interview we did with self-mastery coach Daniel Thomas Hind. Daniel is the founder of Evolution Eat, a transformational diet and lifestyle coaching company for entrepreneurs. Over the past five years, he's personally coached hundreds of high performers and entrepreneurs to reach their full potential by helping them optimize their health, master their mindset and lifestyle, and transform their relationship with food. This is such an important conversation about taking care of yourself as an entrepreneur. We really wanted to bring on somebody that could help you to take care of your company's greatest asset, which is you. And there is such a huge cost to putting your health on the back burner as you build your business. You're going to hear Daniel's passion for his mission to help entrepreneurs take action and full responsibility for the massive impact they have in the world, starting with themselves by focusing on their health. We also get into his business model and how he shifted from one-on-one health coaching to a thriving online, truly scalable model. You're going to love this episode. He has a free gift for you, so be sure to uh, stick around till the end of the episode and enjoy. All right. Welcome, Daniel, to the podcast. How are you? I am awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> we're we're so excited to dive into this conversation. Uh, so let's just start off. Can can you share with our audience a little bit about Evolution Eat and how it came to be? Totally, totally. Yeah. So first and foremost, I'm a coach. I would consider myself a self mastery coach, and I'm the founder of uh, of Evolution Eat, which is a transformational diet and lifestyle coaching company. Um, Over the past five years, I've personally coached, God, hundreds of, who we would call them, high performers, entrepreneurs, executives, entertainers in a one-on-one capacity become um, just more productive uh, at work and create massive impact in the world by mastering their lifestyles and transforming their relationship with food, which really means like transforming their relationship with themselves. And through my company, Evolution Eat, we've served thousands uh, more people do the very same, mostly entrepreneurs like, like yourselves, develop healthy eating habits that last a lifetime by coaching them to fall in love with the process and the practice of what I call uh, evolved living. And the simplest way to say this is that I treat the process of healthy eating and healthy living like a skill that you master and develop and practice over the course of an entire lifetime, like playing the piano, for example, versus a goal that you accomplish and then likely forget about, like going on a diet, which is how most people treat their health, something that they do for a little bit and then forget about and then realize, oh shit, I need to do, I need to pay attention again. And then just kind of live in this yo-yo cycle of up and down, up and down, on, off, in, out. And, um, as an entrepreneur, I fundamentally don't believe that it, that it should be that way because we are, uh, at the center of our, um, of our businesses and of all decision-making. And we really need to be as well-equipped and as stable as possible. Our health being the baseline of stability. Totally. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so good. Uh, <laughs> what we love is so, it's like this is the stuff that we often, as humans and especially as entrepreneurs, we put on the back burner until it's almost too late. And what we love is you really live in what we call the, the sweet spot. Like you are like the the like gatekeeper of the sweet spot. And what we mean by that is we, we coach on, um, Eisenhower's decision matrix and Mm. the sweet spot is really what is important, but not urgent. And what falls into this, uh, above like all else is self care because it's not urgent until it's urgent and we forget about it until we're in trouble. And so we're so excited for you to share with our listeners and entrepreneurs, like how to really 
use this as a tool to like, this is as important as any business strategy, right? Yes. Uh, it's baseline. So this is, I love that you're geeking out on it already because you're going to get me going here. So like, <laughs> as, so on, as entrepreneurs, like we're all obsessed with, and this culture is obsessed with productivity and making a huge impact in the world, right? And we want to be masters of business, but we often overlook being masters of ourselves. And that like might be a scary word. What I mean is just like being in love with ourselves, treating ourselves as we would what treats any sort of successful entity like we do our business where we put so much energy into the business well how come we overlook ourselves and if you know if you speaking of 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 different um different mental models that would be helpful to look at maslow's hierarchy of needs do we all know what maslow's hierarchy of needs are for listeners who don't remember from like high school or college psychology class it's a theory of um how would you call it psychological and emotional health that's predicated on fulfilling innate human needs in priority from the bottom up, so from the bottom of the chart up to the top, culminating in self-actualization at the very top. So in order, it goes from your health, safety, love, esteem, and then self-actualization. And you have to hit each level in order to move on to the next in on your way up towards self-actualization. So at the bottom, let me repeat that, at the bottom of that hierarchy is your health and your well-being. It's the bedrock of a meaningful and productive life. So no matter how successful you get in all other areas of your life, including your business, without being healthy, you'll literally never self-actualize and reach your full potential. And that's super complex and confusing for entrepreneurs because most entrepreneurs that I know live and die by the Gary Vee mantra of like work yourself to death, right? Work yourself to death at all costs in order to be successful. Put a lot of, we we put have a lot of to Gary Vee haters on here. <laughs> no, I, I, I actually love the guy. I actually yeah, think, he, I think he's amazing. But a lot of uh, a lot of like people who are starting out and people who have been in the game for a long time, hell, just a lot of people when they achieve success, they 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 get there by working themselves harder than their competition at the beginning, totally. right? So yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of like a survival of the fittest and you pass a certain threshold and a lot of people you know, die off and some people stay, stay in. So they've then cult, they've, um, they have conditioned themselves to believe that that skill, that of like of insane work ethic is the goal is the golden ticket that will continue to get them ahead and at a certain point it's not true because it becomes a it, there's a there's a cost to it and you're the cost you are the cost your health your wellness your exhaustion levels like your stress levels that becomes a cost to you and if you want to think about yourself as an investment in your business when you become a cost that you have to keep paying the price for Things are going to stall out and sputter, and it would be really sad for people to get to that point where they so overexhaust themselves that everything falls apart. And I've seen that happen time and time again, and uh, like, like I said, it doesn't have to be that way. And yet, it's really compelling to tell yourself, oh, I'll just push it a little bit harder today, and you know, I'll rest during the weekend, and I'll eventually take care of that thing. Because like you said, until it's super urgent – until it's actually an emergency, especially for younger people, it doesn't feel urgent. And, um, and, and, and man, that's a mindset shift that I work on a lot with my clients. So there's, there's a lot that we can dive into here. Wow. I can just feel the passion in, in your message <laughs> here. We love it so much. And, you know, we always know that when somebody is as passionate as you are about their message, that there is something that led them to that point. Can you share with us a little bit about how this became your message and what was it? How has your relationship relationship with food and with taking care of yourself shifted over the years? How did you get to this point and being here so excited talking about how people can empower themselves uh, when it comes to taking care of themselves? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a few things. I mean, um, so first and foremost, over the past, over the past, uh, however many years, three years, two years, I've invested over a hundred thousand dollars in my personal development and my coaching and my leadership training in the form of like 
private coaches and masterminds and training programs. And I've spent another hundred thousand dollars in my business development uh, in the form of mentors and consultants and um, like membership communities and business accelerators and all of it. And like, why do I spend so much money on myself? It's because I know that firsthand that the more that you give, the more that you, you receive. So the more that you invest in yourself, the more the more that I've invested in myself, the more people that I can serve as powerfully and as effectively as possible. And then, of course, the more uh, money that I, I make in business. It's a pretty simple formula. So number one, I'm a coach who I'm a coach and I treat my craft really seriously. And there are a lot of people who call themselves coaches these days who aren't coaches. They have no training, no development, no anything. They just think that, oh, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to be a coach. And like I, I, because there's no way of checking for that or making sure that they're actually can add value to somebody's life, they get to go off and, and call themselves that. And that kind of pisses me off. But so that's one. And then two is that I'm deep down, I'm just an entrepreneur who's obsessed with solving problems. And we're going to get, I'll get into my personal story here. I, um, I just love solving problems. I've always loved solving problems. And now I love creating businesses that, that do that, that create impact and that solve people's problems. That's like my life purpose and my greatest passion. And over the past few years, beyond Evolution Eats, I've built and founded a number of other businesses that, um, that combined have generated multiple seven figures. So like I worked with Daniel D. Piazza, the founder and face of Rich 20 something. I was the head of marketing at Rich 20 for three years and we launched a best selling book together. He and I recently built and sold a digital media company called the Vanguard to LA Weekly. And we also have, um, uh, we have a marketing company called what called the wild group on the side. So I say all this because I know what it's like to live a high performance and extremely in demand lifestyle and still live and speak my truth and work with amazing people on a daily basis. And, um, and through learning and failing and learning and failing, I've come to treat myself with love and with respect through the food that I eat and the way that I take care, take care of myself, which means committing to certain habits and routines that reflect and amplify my greatness. And I invest, to come full circle, I invest so much in myself because I fundamentally believe that I can have it all in life. And I do this work through Evolution Eat because I know that everybody else can as well, that you listening can too. And, and that's, and so like, that's the setup for why I'm actually here. The real reason why I'm here and I'm speaking this message and I'm talking to you on this podcast today is, um, is because as a kid, uh, I was overweight. I was addicted to food. I call it having an abundance relationship with food. And I was an emotional eater and I overcame all of that. And so most people don't believe me when I tell them. Um, but despite what I look like today, I'm just a formerly fat Italian kid from Long Island, New York. And, you know, I'm no longer fat, but I'm definitely still Italian. And in my family, food, um, food equal love. You know, my mother, God bless her heart, Italian mama, she s saturated me with a lot of love. And uh, that's a beautiful thing, right? But food was part of that equation. And I was also an only child. Uh, both my parents worked full time, so I was left alone a lot. And with the setup of food being love and food being a way to like express love and appreciation, it also became a friend. It became a friend to me, right? It was it was a means of entertaining myself, and it was very dependable. Like food is a very dependable friend because it's always there to make you feel a certain way. So food was love, food was friend, food was entertainment, and I grew up this way. Uh, and it's no surprise then that I grew up I was overweight and felt addicted to food. And, um, and even years later, after I cleaned up my diet, which I'm happy to get, to get into, and I lost a bu bunch of weight, uh, I noticed that all of these childhood tendencies, they still reared their heads any time that I was tired or stressed or lonely or sad, basically all consequences of, of at one point or another of being an entrepreneur, tired, lonely, stressed, sad, right? <laughs> uh, overwhelmed, I would turn to food, right? So all the childhood comforts. So even when I transformed my relationship with food and uh, was eating what I call it like an evolutionary diet, a paleo diet, a clean diet, you can call it whatever you like, um, those same tendencies that I grew up with 
would rear their head from time and time again. And that got me super curious. And I started to devote myself into, uh, into, into figuring out why that is like, like why, despite knowing all the information, people are led to choose otherwise over and over and over and over and over again. Right. So this got me really interested in the, the psychology of eating, the emotions behind eating, the habits around eating, um, the rituals that we have with it, how people act in private versus socially. And, uh, and, you know, by the grace of God, people just started asking me to coach them at a very critical phase in my life where I was confused about what to do and where to go. People started asking me to coach them. And, you know, I brought my entire history of being a, you know, an overweight kid and, um, and kind of self obsessively studying about all this stuff that I was just talking about for myself. And then it started applying that to my clients. And, um, you know, five years later, here we are. You have a story that totally, I feel like 90% of people in the whole world can relate to this because for many of us, I think, I think food has evolved and changed and the mindset around food has changed drastically in the Mm -hmm. last 15 years or so. But most of us grew up in a time where food was changing behind our backs and (laughs) the right, like the, the culture around food was changing in a certain direction when we were kids and then took this like, like sharp turn in the last five years or so. And I think people now are really aware and and becoming more mindful of the way that they fuel their bodies and food rather than being this ritual uh you know there's like family dinners and the the food was part of an experience now the food is the experience now we're not only mindful of who we eat with and when we eat but also what we eat and how it affects what we do how it affects our service how it affects our quality of life uh, and we'd love for you to share with us some of the things that you've learned in that aspect of like what what kinds of foods and what kind of uh, awareness can you recommend to people who want to use food to fuel their life and their business and really uh, enhance their quality of life by enhancing the quality of their food? Yeah, totally. Happy to to dive in. Um, I guess is a nice way to 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 put a bow on my share from like how I got into my, about my childhood and how I got in to this line of work is that, you know, even like it's even five years after coaching and doing this for a living and creating an entire business and company around it and working with people every day on a one-on-one basis and through my groups, like even after that, and even after five years prior to that of like total of having transformed my relationship with food and adopting a new diet, um, this stuff still shows up today. Like the, like I'll still use food as an emotional crutch or as a way to self isolate when things get hard. And when I feel incredibly overwhelmed from life and or work. And I imagine, well, I'm, I'm saying this, um, like, like uh, this is, uh, like, like I already, I already know the answer to this. Like I, I imagine that a lot of people feel the same way. And based on the people that I work with, I know that this is true, where they use food as an emotional crutch, as a way to channel, um, to channel energy, either to relieve pain or to relieve stress, because they simply don't know how to channel all the demands coming at them on a day to day basis. Right. And so some people in the world use alcohol or drugs or whatever as a way to self medicate. And others use food and it doesn't have to be to that extreme degree. But the thing about food is that it's actually addicting, um, especially the food that's not so good for us. The food that large corporations are pumping literally billions of dollars into engineering it so that it's like so that we want to eat it all the time. Right. And it also happens to be like ubiquitous. You can find it anywhere around the corner. You can order it on your smartphone at any moment. You can always get it, right? So, and it's culturally pushed at us from all angles, right? So you're marketed, you, you, it's being marketed to you all the time. 
and culturally, the way that you engage with people, even in, in large groups, it's always like part of the experience, right? So um, a lot of people who I know, entrepreneurs primarily, high performers, people who operate under this, um, under the guise of I'm, I'm so busy all the time and probably for good reason, they often relinquish control in, a, in, in, in some area of their life and or look to something in order to give them a sense of relief, stress relief, pain relief. And food often becomes that very thing, right? Uh, for all the reasons I just mentioned. And, and the, and, but nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to talk about it because it's super vulnerable, potentially embarrassing. And it's also just really lonely being a leader. Right. Like it's really lonely being an entrepreneur. Uh, most people's friends who they grew up with and their families don't really understand the pressures of what it takes to like quite literally take full responsibility for your life. Like you're the sole provider for yourself. If you have a team for your team, for your clients, you're like the answer to their problems. Right. Like like nobody really quite understands what that what the pressure of that feels like unless you are also an entrepreneur. Right. And, and the thing about entrepreneurs is that we also want to be either Superman or, or Wonder Woman around our clients, our employees, our peers, our loved ones. So there's not a lot of opportunity to share this sort of stuff, to actually be vulnerable about, vulnerable about it and to talk about it in a meaningful way. So that's really why I loved going on podcasts and just speaking talk, speaking my message, because it's hopefully an opportunity for people to open up and to, in you know, to really share about like what the impact of this is on your life, because it's not a problem. It's, it's not like a problem that you have, like there's something wrong with you. Like there's something that needs to be fixed within you. If this is something that, that you either suffer from or just experience in a way that has you feeling disempowered, like there's nothing in you that needs to be fixed. It's just a lot of conditioning that has led to this point. And there are solutions to, to move beyond it. And it, and for a lot of people that I know, like the majority of people just this shows up in ways where like they realize like, wow, I'm snacking all the time and I and I really wish that I wasn't or I'm drinking way too much coffee or I'm eating way too much sugar. And it's not like a problem problem in their lives. They wouldn't associate it like that. But it's um, the tendencies are starting to get more and more um, alarming and they start to people start to notice themselves less and less in control, which can very quickly compound into being a problem unless you start being mindful about it. So God, uh, happy to, so there are so many layers to this. I'll, the, I'll, I'll, I said at the beginning that I treat this whole process like a skill that you develop versus a goal that you accomplish. And if you treat it like a skill, then you have to look at your whole, like your whole, the whole person behind it, right? Because there's so much that goes into actually learning something. It's not just about the information, it's not just about, well, here's the diet, good luck. Uh, if it was about the information, then, you know, be, with, the, with, the, with the internet, who says, some, some entrepreneurs said this, I think it's Derek Sivers, like we'd all be billionaires with six packs, right? Because there's, we have an abundance of information now. We have all the information that we need. It's not just about that. It's how you approach it. It's who you're being about it, who you are in relation to the skill that you are trying to um, master. And it's really about, practice, like giving yourself the opportunity to practice doing things a certain way and not having to get it right, uh, right off the get go. So there are a few things that are like, that are involved. It's about you. It's about the diet. It's about your mindset. It's about the habits. It's about the emotions behind it. It's about the strategy, the, your actual like preparedness, um, levels of accountability in the same way that if you were to learn how to play the piano, you would have to, you would have to, you would have to likely recruit the instruction of an expert, right? And you would have to meet with that person on a, on a, on a weekly basis. And you would have to like take their instruction, trust that what they're saying is, is correct. Take their instruction, practice, make a hell of a lot of mistakes, like in, make tons of mistakes and then invest in those mistakes, go home, practice, study, make decisions in your life that support you're getting better and improving, right? Like saying no to video games or no to your friends sometimes when they want to go out because you're actually interested in developing and learning and practicing, which is the only way that you start to master this and internalize it. Um, and through that process over time, you gain an internal intuitive understanding of your relationship with 
the uh, with the piano. And in this case, it's really with your relationship with food, which even deeper means your relationship with yourself. So uh, fundamentally, at the bottom of all this, you want to be eating what we call uh, a, a clean diet. I call it an evolutionary diet, which means um, which means ba- that we that our ancestors evolved eating certain foods, and it's likely that our metabolisms uh, evolved to eat those foods. They they our metabolism our metabolisms optimized for eating those foods, right? So. Um, Getting, so if we look at what's actually natural and real in the world, getting rid of um, of refined sugars, of foods that have tons and tons of additives, uh, gluten and dairy can be very inflammatory for people, even if they don't like to hear that sort of thing. Um, uh, so like that's a baseline. If it was born or grown on Earth or the sea or the land, then that's a good place to start, right? Uh, but one thing that I don't push on people, and then we can kind of get into a conversation around this. One thing I don't push on people is my way. Like, as far as your diet's concerned, evolution is my philosophy, and I call this an evolutionary diet. Some people call it a paleo diet, uh, and that's what I do. By and large, people know what paleo means these days. Uh, that's how I eat, but um, I don't claim to be a guru in this area and you, whoever you are, are a unique human being. You're, you're who you are and you might have, um, you might have a set of beliefs and ethics that you really hold dear. So my teachings are meant to be a guideline, like a foundational template that's worked for many, but, um, you can be incredibly successful following variations of whatever plan. The features of the diets are far less important often than the process towards mastering your diet. So like my goal is to really help you, the listener, or if you were my client, help you create the diet and the lifestyle of your dreams, not mine. So if that's a paleo diet or an evolutionary diet, great. If that's vegetarian, awesome. If that's something else entirely, perfect. The Breakthrough is really your your creation, like the cre- you're creating what's truest and most meaningful to you, and then consistently following through with that and practicing it to the point that it becomes something that you can intuitively rely on. So uh, I just said a lot there. <laughs> I'm going to press pause on my on my speaking and see if you've got something to. <laughs> I, I can keep going, but uh, I'll see if you got something to, to chime in with. <laughs> Again, we love your passion for for what you do and and your approach as well. I mean, it's it's definitely a much more holistic and 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 gentle approach, and also starts with that with the root of what we know everything does right with uh, that relationship with self. So we're definitely in alignment there. And so tell us a little bit about uh, your business and and how uh, maybe a little bit about what your business model is. Of course, we have a lot of entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs uh, listening, maybe even in the, the health industry. And so uh, how did you decide on on your business model and what does it look like? Cool. Um, how did I decide on it? That's a great question. <laughs> um, it I just decided on it by <laughs> by, by answering to people who wanted me to coach them. I mean, truthfully, this I started five years ago and I was a coach first and foremost. And um, I, I don't think the, the whole story about that is, is, is important other than there's one key factor. So I was at a time in my life when I was just starting out. I was at a crossroads. I was completely confused. I grew up a professional academic. I chose not to go to law school when I was preparing to go to law school for my entire life. And then for like five years after college, was totally lost, tried 5,000 different things and um, none of it worked. And I, I felt pretty hopeless. Uh, it was a pretty dark period of my life until um, I, a number of people started asking me to coach them. And on their diet, on their nutrition. And it was a, a based around this idea of, hey, I have tried dieting before and I can't follow through with it. I end up becoming, I'm speaking as the client, I end up becoming the bottleneck to my success, right? Like what's that? So I need somebody to hold me accountable. And I said, you know, everything in my life changed the day that somebody handed me 
money. I think it was a $50 bill. It was like my first contract. And they say, I want you to coach me. I need you to coach me. And I said, and I was like, so let me get this straight. You want me to coach you about something that I do for myself because I care about it for me. That's valuable to you. And they're like, yes, you've proven that you can make, like you can live this way. You can eat clean and healthily and stably for years and years and years on end. And I've never been able to do that before. You have value to me. And I was like, whoa, okay. That flipped the switch. That changed everything to me because I recognized that um, you, anybody has inherent value, right? The things that you're really passionate about, you can, that's in, that can be valuable to somebody else. So uh, when somebody picks that, so when I dove in, I just said, okay, I'm going to do the best work possible for this one client. And through that one client, he referred me to somebody else. And then, you know, fast forward many years later, and I have a full-time one-on-one practice. This was about uh, a year and a half ago. Mm, yeah, about a year and a half ago, a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit longer than that. I had a full, full one-on-one practice. Um, I could support myself just by doing that. I was also working with uh, my friend Daniel Di Piazza on his business and learned marketing and online, like how to do it, how to build an online business and all the components of that at the same time. I was doing that for years, which was supplementing my income, but really helping me learn how to how to be an entrepreneur and how to build your own business. It's one thing to have a practice, a coaching practice, which is awesome, but but it's more like being a freelancer. Um, and then it's another to have to be an entrepreneur and to actually build a company around it. So, um, so, so one thing that was incredibly important to me was to was to scale my ideas, right? But my ideas are pretty unique and you have to talk to me for like an hour just to get the to get an essence of 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 my approach and where I'm coming from with all of it. So I started to think about well how can I actually scale this coaching when it's when my when my secret weapon seems to be like me. The secret weapon to my business seems to be me and the way in which I work with people in a one-on-one capacity. That seems hard. So um I ended up just Putting, I, I hired a coach to help me write out my entire process. Like I wrote it as a book, and um, and from that place, I recognized that I actually have an entire methodology which I can teach. So from there, I built uh, online. I built an online course, which was cool. It's like something that you can purchase and educate yourself. But it really didn't get at the heart of um, why I'm in this sort of work, which is for transformation, not just for teaching people stuff, but to actually help them transform their lives. So it was at that phase about a year ago that I started to build out uh, a group coaching program and a group coaching platform where I teach, I coach, we do live trainings. Uh, and I get to, and I also get to teach my entire methodology from start to finish. Um, and, iteratively help people change their habits and the way that they go about eating, like the habits around and um, behind eating uh, through a three month process that I have called just, which is evolution eats, which is the company, uh, which is the name of the company. So uh, long way of saying I started as a one-on-one coach and then scaled that coaching by, um, by figuring out what my methodology was and making that a group coaching program as well. So now I do one-on-one coaching and I also do, uh, and we also do the same work through our, uh, group programs, which honestly is just as good, if not better than the one-on-one coaching, because you have a whole community who's also there to support you. And this, and, um, like we talked about before being vulnerable about this stuff and talking about your struggles and, and how this shows up in your life is often the breakthrough that most people are looking for when it comes to making serious progress in this area of their life, like just being able to talk about it. So, um, and then from there, you know, I also help people build their own coaching practices now. And I, I haven't built out a program for that, but I do work in a one-on-one capacity with that. So it's really just, uh, ever evolving, but also getting clear on what I do best and, and scaling that, right? So it's like my unique methodology and I figured out a way that I can scale that. So it's all, um, it's all remote. It's all online. And, you know, I guess you can say I can, I can live the dream and that I can work from anywhere, even though I happen to live in Santa Monica, Los Angeles, and I love it here. Uh, but I can work from anywhere. I really just need a laptop and my cell phone. And, um, 
you know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have a whole team that supports me now. I have two full-time employees and I have two apprentices who are help uh, coaches who help out in the group program and, um, looking to expand beyond that by the end of this year. Awesome. Awesome. Oh my gosh. You dropped so much value on this episode. We're like still just internalizing it all. And I think our audience is going to really find a lot of comfort in, you know, hearing that you have this business that so many, I think that the health and wellness industry is fairly saturated. And it's so beautiful to hear that you've been able to scale this and and really just follow your intuition and service minded kind of uh, action to mm. create something that works really well for you that allows you to serve and scale on such a big level. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and I think we're just coming up to the end here and we would love for you to share where people can get more of this and find out more about what you're doing. Absolutely. And let, let me just say, before I go there, I'll say one thing that will be very valuable to your listeners. One thing that I've started to do recently, this is only through the urging of one of my mentors who is far more successful than I am. Um, I started to change. I started to get really curious about the audience whom I was serving. So for a long time, I just made it up. And I was like, I was like, this applies to everyone. And it does. But the more precise you get about the audience that you can serve and the audience that you can speak to, the more authentic you are when you're actually sharing your message because you want to like you want to you know their pains, you know their problems, you know their issues, you know the objections that they have, you know who they are in and out. And so it wasn't until this, you know, within the past quarter, and I'm still doing a lot of work to um, make this public, I've gotten super clear that my audience and the people who I want to serve are entrepreneurs, primarily entrepreneurs, right? And when you get clear on that, your messaging becomes way clearer. Uh, the way that you approach them becomes way clearer and you get to relate to them. So you start to develop intimacy with the people who you want to serve, which is really important when you're just starting out. You want to intimately intimately relate to the person so that they know that you know, you, the the expert, know the life that they're living and how you can help them, right? And they can, they will never know that unless they feel an intimate connection with you. So that, like I said, I'm, that's still in process right now. Uh, for my having gotten clear about that, am I switching over to? The, am I changing all my messaging to support that? But since we started that, things have really started to take off, and that's got me super excited because I love entrepreneurs, and I <laughs> believe that entrepreneurs are here to change the world and we need as much support as we can, as we, we can get to, um, we need as much support as possible because it's lonely out there. It's really lonely. So, um, uh, awesome. so yeah, getting super clear on your messaging is, 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 uh, is, is, is critical when you're just starting out. Um, how can people find me? Well, my company is called evolution eats. That's the word evolution and then E A T all one word dot com. And, you know, there's the typical stuff. If there's a there's a if you sign up for the newsletter, there's a really awesome ebook that basically describes my entire methodology that I only started to get into today. So if you've heard or saw something for yourself in today's conversation, you'll definitely get a lot out of that. And um, one thing that I'd love to extend, if, if anybody just wants to have a conversation around coaching or their diet or their health, um, and you heard something on this podcast and you just like want to dive deeper into it, I invite you to send me a personal email. I no, normally never do this, but <laughs> if you just put BLE podcast in the subject, uh, in the subject line or anything that you want, in the Kima and Pua in the subject line, um, I'll have my assistant flag that down and I'm happy to continue the conversation with you that way. Cause a lot of people don't talk about it this way. And when somebody does hear me and it registers for them, uh, they know that they're my people. So I want to be able to cater to my people. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing so much of your heart with us today. And yeah, we'll be sure to include where people can find you in the show notes. And yeah, thank you for sharing your time with us. Of course. Thank you for having me here. It's such an awesome pleasure. 
We hope you enjoyed this interview with Daniel Thomas Hind. Again, you can go to evolutioneat.com slash guide, and he has a free gift for you there, a free download. His website is evolutioneat. Uh, you can also email him that special invitation that, that he gave us. So be sure to let him know that you heard him here on the Broke Ass to Badass podcast. Take a screenshot of this episode, tag Daniel on Instagram, tag us at Broke Ass to Badass. And as always, we can continue the conversation in our free tribe on Facebook. You can find that at bledigital.com slash tribe. Hop on over to the tribe. Let us know what you thought of this episode and how you're going to be taking care of yourself as your business's greatest asset. We'll see you in there.